bigger boat. <laughs> Spring at Flaming Gorge means one thing, and that's gill netting. Um, we're here with Ryan Mosley, the project leader for Flaming Gorge. And uh, Ryan, tell us a little bit about what the different types of gill netting you do each spring and, and the information that you, you gain from, from those nets. Uh, we use two different types of gill nets here on the gorge. Um, we use uh, experimental nets, and we, we launch those on the shoreline, uh, targeting shoreline-oriented species like rainbow trout, smallmouth bass, even small lake trout. And then we also do open water deep sets along the bottom in some key areas for, for big lake trout, monitoring that trophy lake trout component of the reservoir. And uh, when we do our trophy lake trout netting, all those fish are, are captured, measured, weighed, we pump the stomachs for diet contents, and then we release them back to the reservoir so anglers can take advantage of them at a later date. Uh, with all the shoreline sets, you know, we're bringing those fish in back to the dock or back to the office and uh, doing links, weights, neat cropsies to determine fish health, uh, diet, um, things of that nature. So uh, we get a pretty good snapshot of both, uh, well, all facets of the fishery, you know, from all different species. And then one other thing that, that's important to recognize is that while we're doing this on the Utah end of the reservoir, Wyoming Game and Fish is doing their own netting on that end of the reservoir and we coordinate our, the timing of this event so we're getting a a large snapshot of the whole reservoir. How does the information help you manage the lake? What kind of things can it tell you? Well, you know, well, a prime example was, you know, only 15, 20 years ago, we recognized we saw these this rapidly increasing small lake trout in the Ryan? reservoir, and it, it allows us to adjust our management, um, yeah, our, our regulations to to promote the harvest of those fish and, and allow people to keep more, you know, so we don't get into this forage bottleneck situation where we're having issues with uh, con issues with poor condition on small lake trout. And that, and so it was information garnered from the netting that helped you make the decision to try to promote juvenile pup lake trout harvest. You had a great day with the deep set nets, 13 lake trout, over 100 pounds of fish. Come in the shallows and you found some more surprises. We did. We got it, you know, and that's not that uncommon for us this time of year. We pick up some pretty big uh, lake trout in the in the shallow sets. You know, we're setting those about five in the morning and pulling them at nine. They're only four hour sets, but I think we're setting in prime activity time. And then with all the, as you saw, all those rainbow trout, and we even saw kokanee in the in those shallow sets. They're in there feeding on those same species that we're trying to target. So uh, we got one that was about 13 pounds I think but the the real big one that was kind of a surprise was the 28 and a half pounder that came from about 20 30 feet of water. And that fish survived and was released and it able did. to Yeah you you took care of it, you babied it, <laughs> you, you you pet it on the shoreline and yeah it, it happily swam away. Well, so I, maybe we'll catch it later. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope it gains a couple of pounds. I I uh, you know I, I I was saying you know today I've never caught a 30 pound lake trout but I sure let a lot go today. Yeah. That was nice. It's early to say now, but today's results, uh, things look good. 
It does. You know, we also did a, a lake trout netting um, uh, out on Antelope Flat last week, and that went really well too. We got six fish, or actually seven fish, and, and lost one right at the boat there. And, and that was that's up from last year. So, yeah, it looks like everything's doing really well. We, we obviously have some really big fish in the reservoir, and the smaller fish are showing really well, good signs of uh, though, uh, good old. health and condition. And, and it's good to see the smallmouth bass and rainbow trout are real active in the shallows too. So. It'll all be helpful information for anglers in the next month or two. Seeing these big fish in shallow like this is an indication of maybe ways we should be fishing for. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, if you if you had time to devote, you know, towards uh, these bigger lake trout fish in the shallows, I think you can you can catch them on swim baits or you know large casting large tubes into the shallows and working them back. There's actually a couple guys here in Dutch John that are that are real prone to coming out here and casting big flies, big clousers and stuff like that. And they put a lot of time in and they turn a lot of fish and occasionally catch a real big one. So it's, it can be done. That's and, great. And you've seen it happen out here today and they're in the nets, they're, they're catchable. Oh, they're strong fish, they're amazing. They're powerful, Yeah. fish. When they're so big, it's, yeah. uh, it's kind of funky holding a fish that big. Yeah, it's <laughs> impressive, it's a big animal, big fish. Well, thanks a lot, Ryan. Good luck for the rest of the week and finishing off the spring gill netting. Oh, no, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for right. coming out and helping oh, us. Oh, yeah, you bet. So in addition to the deep net sets they put for the lake trout, they also do some shore nets. They're a little bit more shallow. They get a variety of species. They want to see what's going on out here. You can see they've got uh, a pretty big range right here. Smallmouth bass, a kokanee, which usually doesn't show up in these, um, but uh, you never know what you're going to get at, at uh, Flaming Gorge, so um, we'll take it. This guy, the big lake trout, <clears throat> may have been chasing this guy right here. <laughs> Who knows? The, the two fish like this came in, on about 30 pounds. And then they got these nice, healthy rainbows. A lot of people overlook the rainbow fishery at the gorge, but look at these fish. You know, they're some beautiful fish. Go a long ways to feeding a family right there. And never, ever underestimate the value of kokanee meat. It's very, very tasty. 30-pound lake trout caught in the gill nets less than an hour ago, going back to the lake. Big, chunky fish, healthy. Biggest one of the day, guys? This is the biggest one? Yeah, the biggest one of the season. Okay, you ready? Almost. So you're fishing for lake trout and you pull out a kokanee, huh? Well, no, I saw a fish up real shallow <laughs> and I dropped down the buzz bomb and pulled up a kokanee. It's nice. First one of the year. First one of the year. Beautiful fish. Silver bullet. Dinner tonight. Tastes really good. You can't have it. I know. <laughs>